forgot to resume the <laughs> there we go. It's all good. It's all good. You can, al you can always do that again. Uh, <laughs> uh, really, really kind words, uh, April. So I'm excited to be here. Uh, so when April asked me to to hop on and talk about Walk the Talk, um, she and I have had a lot of uh, chances to be able to uh, kind of go through some of the history of what predictive uh, ROI as, a, as an organization has been through and everything along those lines. Um, so being in the room with folks that are running their own books of business and running their own businesses, uh, you guys get it. Um, sometimes the advice that we give is easier to give than it is to take uh, when it comes to different to different folks. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to my eCam uh, so you guys can see that. And if you want to just um, just pin my video, that's probably the easiest way to be able to see this. Um, and so when we go through this, I'll be able to, to kind of uh, draw on this and everything along those lines. Um, so really, truly ask questions, interrupt. Uh, there's nothing about this uh, that we're going to be talking through that is, is meant to be consumed in a vacuum. OK, so um, walk in the talk. Uh, one of the things so we specialize in helping uh, agencies, coaches and consultants uh, grow their business based on a thought leadership positioning. Um, and so there are certain elements that we teach on a regular basis um, that we hear our clients tell us is nothing new, okay? This is something that they hear on a regular basis, or better yet, this is something that they teach others all the time, but for some reason, they are the cobbler's kids when it comes to these sorts of things. They just don't do those efforts. Um, now, this could be for you as an organization. This could be you when it comes to different leadership uh, roles, as far as like, this is what I want someone to do, but then I don't. Um, one of the big ones that we typically see, uh, and by the way, I am guilty of this myself, uh, time tracking is really big within a lot of uh, within a lot of organizations, especially with remote teams and things along those lines. Guess who sucks at time tracking? Right here, this guy, right? So uh, there's always going to be things that we're not good at when it comes to walking the talk. Um, but the more that we get right, the better uh, experience we're going to have with our clients and with our internal teams, um, which is one of the biggest areas that we've, we've seen a big change in, in how we go about uh, doing our stuff, right? So from an external perspective, I'll give you an example of one of the times that we were the cobbler's kids. Uh, we wrote a book. Um, and Well, we, we've written a few, but there was one book in particular that came out, uh, so with authority, and we're like, yes, this is going to be a great book. We went out, we launched it, it got all sorts of people. We're super excited about it within our particular space. And we're like, this is cool. And then we started to re, you know, reread the book and we went, hmm, we're not doing all of those things. Hmm, uh, that's a gap. Uh, what do we tell people? And, and so we actually had to do a lot of soul searching as an organization to the point where we, free, we reframed how we go about uh, solving problems. And so we changed our core values as an organization to add one that uh, I love personally. I reference it all the time. Um, and we call it, eat your, we eat our own dog food. Okay. Um, and really what this gets down to is we will not teach anybody something that we ourselves are not doing. Okay. And it's a really simple premise. Um, if we can't do it, then we shouldn't be teaching it. If we haven't experimented with it and found the holes in the process, if we haven't been there in the trenches doing the work, how on earth could we possibly lead someone else to be able to do that? Okay. Now, sometimes we don't have the ability to eat our own dog food in every single process within our own organizations. My guess is you guys are not experts at every step within, within your organization, but somebody within your organization needs to understand all of those steps in order to bring on new people, to onboard effectively, to be able to onboard clients effectively. Like there's nothing worse than when you're onboarding a client and they ask you a question like, hey, how do you do this? And you go, yeah, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've done that. Uh, let me go check with someone on what that would look like. OK, um, so when it comes to your guys processes, just, you know, quick show of hands. Are you guys pretty familiar with your processes front to back as far as if you needed to walk someone through it? 
Okay. Because if you are, that, that's a huge win right there. It's amazing how often that is not the case. Okay. So then, then I, 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 quick, uh, other quick question. How many of you guys have uh, teams under you that are working or you have other managers or things along those lines? Okay. So some of you, and, and it looks like Rob, so you're, you're running a uh, solopreneur as of right now. Is that correct? Okay. Perfect. And then final quick question around this part. How many of you guys have read E-Myth Revisited? Okay. If you've not read that one, I highly recommend you read that one. Uh, there's only a couple of business books that I would say uh, you should be reading in your life. That's one of them. Um, and and E-Myth is really all about walking the talk, right? It's about doing the things and then writing them down so that other people can actually do those things as well, instead of just vaguely assigning a project or a task and saying, go forth. And amazingly, when we do the, when we walk through the stuff ourselves, we're a lot better at teaching it. And when we're a lot better at teaching it, we get a whole lot better results from those people that we're working alongside. Okay. So Rob, I don't know what your plan is as far as how you're planning on growing your organization, but if you're planning on growing it past yourself, being able to get it out of your head and down on paper is hugely important. And you can't really do that effectively unless you're actually doing the different processes. I'm talking the processes that you don't like to do. I'm talking the processes that are annoying. I'm talking the processes that take all sorts of detail to write down. Uh, but when you do that, it makes a world of difference. So uh, one of the things that I really love to do when I teach, uh, April knows this well, Jamie, you've experienced this many times as well, um, is, uh, is I like to have people actually do something when they're learning, because I, I don't think it's as effective to just sit and listen to someone pontificate. Um, so what we did as an organization is we looked at the things that we wanted to be really, really good at because we knew that they mattered to our clients. And we wanted to not only look at what it is that we were doing, we wanted to know so well what we were doing as an organization that we could teach it to other people. Now, in our case, we were teaching it outside of our organization as well as internally, okay? That may or may not be appropriate for what you guys are doing. It might be, right? But either way, being able to have it written down well enough that you guys can teach someone else is important. So um, with our strengths to leverage, these are things that you guys are already good at, okay? These are strengths as an organization. And what I want you to think about is what are the few strengths? Because you probably don't have a ton and that's okay. What are the three to five strengths that you bring to the table every day for your clients that you think moves the needle as far as why people work with you instead of anybody else, okay? Take a minute and write those down. Some people might describe these as their unique positioning statements. I love to call them my, they're your superpowers. You would ask clients where they work with you. This is the stuff that they would say. All right, I know I didn't give everybody very much time, but I also want to respect the fact that we want to uh, make time for, for the Q&A portion as well. So as long as you got one or two of these things down, that's fine. And then my next question would be to you is, is this, this strength, if, if this is a core strength of your organization, do you have it written down in a process? Do you have it documented? So that when someone new comes in to your organization, can they do it? Can they do it with the excellence that you do it? Can they do it for the same reasons you do it? Do they understand what it takes to deliver that strength? Because if they don't, you will fail to scale as an organization. 
All right. So just looking at your list, do you believe that you could hand a written instruction to someone and maybe give 10 to 15 minutes worth of education around it and have someone run with that core strength? And if you can, give yourself a pat on the back. That is awesome because a lot of times that's not the case. Okay. And the reason why we start with these, these strengths to leverage these core strengths that you need to have as an organization is because they're what's allowing you to grow to begin with. They're the reason people are choosing to work with you. So as you scale, if that dilutes, if that goes away, or if that morphs into something that is no longer the core of what makes you unique or different, then what's going to happen is you're going to eventually become and look like everybody else within your marketplace, which is going to make your biz dev efforts incredibly difficult. Okay. Either that, or you as an organization leader are going to have to be micromanaging everybody under you to make sure that it's going out to the same standards, neither of which is a big win. Okay. So another thing that I, I usually like to do, I didn't, I didn't write these down. Uh, I apologize, although we've, we've certainly got some strengths to, to develop uh, for ourselves as well. Um, but these, these are the things that you know that you need to get better at as an organization in order to win. These are the things that could help you stand out a lot more. These are the things that your competitors are running away from because they're hard. Okay? These are the things that if you get good at them, you're going to stand head and shoulders above others within the marketplace. Okay? So I want you to write these down, not as far as like, are they realistic? I want you to write them down aspirationally, okay? These are things that we would like to be known for. These are things that we would like to stand out for. These are strengths we would like the marketplace to recognize that we have, okay? Just, just take a minute to think about that too. And don't be too scared about any that you put down. Even if they say I'll give you just a minute on these. Again, I know I know it's not a ton of time, but I want to make sure that we we keep moving too. Um, so these are the the pieces of your business that you need to start walking the talk. You know it's important, otherwise you wouldn't have written it down. Okay, so not in not in one fell swoop, not in trying to do everything all at once, but next to these. And this is why I, I had the, the other section over here on, on this particular piece of the, um, the, the document. I want to just write down one baby step, okay? One baby step that you could do to start improving on that. One small piece that you could document and you could do pretty well, okay? And you don't have to do it for all of them. You might just pick one of them. You know what? We could change how we do X with, with this particular issue, with this particular strength to develop. Or if there's strengths to leverage that you don't have to the point where you could just hand off to someone, write down one baby step that you could document on that. And if you're struggling with this, I'd highly recommend start with the things that are process driven, the tactical sorts of things, less than the strategic sorts of things. Strategy is always much harder to codify. Okay. And as an organization, you can more easily and quickly take things off of your plate that are process driven 
you might have to retain the things that are strategy or smarts driven. That's okay. Because the more day-to-day -day stuff you get off your plate, the more time you have to focus on those things anyway. So your business is inherently more scalable. Right? Okay. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna just bring this up as a demonstration to kind of talk about some of the th things that we we do as far as um, ways to kind of leverage what it is that we do. So we we eat our own dog food. We talked about that. Um, and one of the things that we try to teach our clients all the time is they've got to have worthwhile content. They need to be helpful. They need to both do and teach, right? Because if you're not good at teaching, that's going to harm you as an organization. Um, because you can't ever get it out of your brain and down where other people can actually run with it. Uh, you need to be niche down so you're not focused on just everybody. You need to plant your flag and you need to be focused on using your authority positioning to, to um, do sales. So we do all of those things on like a daily basis. And what we do is we find ways to be able to leverage the walking the walk in a way that uh, helps other people or walk the talk as well. Um, so when we teach, we record it on videos and then we transcribe it. And then we try to break it down into guides. <laughs> we do all these steps and it's like, oh, why are you doing that? That's so much work to be able to get that stuff done. But when it comes time for us to be able to bring someone on board and move the, the organization forward, it is so much easier than it ever used to be as an organization. Our chances of bringing someone up to speed on what it is that they need to go uh, and do on a daily basis in our organization has gone from six to nine months to get them up to speed to about a month to get them up to speed. Okay, big, big difference on being able to demonstrate how to walk the talk, not just talk to someone and say, go do, okay? So now, I, again, I looked at this from our perspective as an organization. I looked at this from our perspective on uh, kind of an internal resource. We have a unique positioning in that we're also teaching outbound the same stuff, okay? But every organization can take this internally. And a lot of these same things still apply to other aspects of our life. I know that we've gotten, I've gotten a lot better when it comes to my own son. Uh, so Rob, I know that you've got a little one. Um, and oh my gosh, kids are the most stressful and time consuming thing in your life in a wonderful way. Uh, but I've never spent more time thinking about anything in my life than my son and what the future is going to be like for him and how to make sure things are going to be better for him and all those sorts of things. And, and again, you can use a lot of this same stuff, a lot of these same steps um, to make it easy for them to learn simple things like what does it look like to do your own laundry? What does it look like to be able to load the dishwasher and put it away? What does it look like to be able to pick up your room at night? Simple stuff. Um, but you know, we, we, we run across this in our personal lives a lot, not just in business. So it's a useful skill set um, to be able to kind of look through. And, and again, you just go back to those strengths to leverage. You're like, okay, what are the, what are the things that we, we need to make sure that we're representing as, as a family, that's our organization, and here's the things that we're gonna train around, right? Okay, so I will stop talking. As, as April said, I usually go a little bit long, so I apologize on that front. Um, but if anybody's got any questions or comments or things like that, let's, let's dive into it. I know there's lots of brave individuals. You may go, uh, just open up mic. Well, I'll start. It, uh, listening to you, and it makes absolute sense. Um, your example of the washer, you know, how to do your laundry and things. We know how to fill a dishwasher and wash dishes, how to get dressed in the morning and all the steps it takes to do those things. And we could probably explain that, but when it comes to things like business, I'm finding right now in the process I'm in that I'm having a difficult time putting, well, not, well, actually I know the steps, but conveying verbally or putting it down on paper, those steps um, has been a challenge. Yeah, getting it out of your head. 
getting it out of my head. Yeah. Yep. So question for you, Stephen, are you, would you consider yourself to be stronger at writing or speaking? Probably speaking. Okay. And how do you try to convey information and get it out of your head for the most part to your team? So that, that's interesting. Um, I've been talking with them one-on-one. -on -one. I haven't been able to get them together. I'm just starting a team. Okay. I've just got a number of people that I've, I've brought uh, that I brought on but haven't been able to solidify them you know get them all together um, I'm working on that right now and and together around a central thing like we're they're all new agents ah okay yeah agents or they haven't got their licenses yet but I'm trying to get them all started on a pathway so we got that a when to learn what so they have a ton to learn. Oh yeah, they have everything to learn. Yep, <laughs> okay. So do you record when you talk to them? No. Okay, could you? Sure. All right. So that's that's an easy step for a lot, for a lot of folks, and this is me included. I have an easier time speaking and communicating then I do writing and communicating. It's not that I'm bad at writing. It just takes me a whole lot longer to write it the way that I want it to. And it makes less sense. And oftentimes it makes less sense or I get so bogged down in the details in the writing that it's it, it's no longer useful um, compared to if I'm able to speak and I'm able to draw on things. I mean, like you guys see this, you know, this document in front of me, like I use this software all the time to explain concepts. Right, because it's much easier to be able for me to be able to do that when I'm teaching folks. Um, and so, but one of the things that we're really good at is we record everything, right? I mean, all for, just if we're teaching something, it gets recorded. And then we have folks that are our go to to be able to take the, the verbal content that's been recorded and break out the stuff that is most important. Break out the stuff that needs to be written down. Break out the stuff that needs to be documented. And sometimes they come back to us and say, hey, you mentioned this thing. And you did a sucky job of explaining what that is. So you need to do another recording that tells us what that is, right? It's like, oh, okay. And it might seem a little bit like, oh, now we're going down this rabbit hole of we got to record everything. We got to teach everything. We got to do all the steps. And it's got to go to someone to be able to write it and all that. And yeah, it's a lot, but the reality is, I mean, you're gonna have to do that. And Stephen, in your particular case, where you've got a group of people that are, I mean, green when it comes to, to the space that you're in, they've got a lot to learn. And so they're gonna need a framework um, for what it is that they're learning. And by the way, this is a, a bit of an aside. Okay, so um, there are kind of three different levels uh, to learning for the most part. Okay, um, and then, and mastery, okay. So when you guys are thinking about the documentation of stuff, understanding where someone is at is also important. So from a novice perspective, what they're looking for is they're looking for Mad Libs, okay? They, they wanna be able to kind of fill in the blank in order to be able to do this work. It's not that they're not brilliant. It's not that they're not good at what they do. It's that all of this is really new to them, even though it might not be to, new to you as the principal of your organization, okay? So it might seem like you're breaking it down really, really simple, but the closer you can get it to Mad Libs, the better. And by the way, the closer you get it to Mad Libs, the less staffing problems you have because you can bring in anybody. McDonald's is really good at being able to churn out a business model on the backs of teenagers, okay? They have exceptional training and process because they make it so that it's fill in the blank with everything, all right? I'm not saying you want to take it to that extreme, but the closer you get to that, the more scalable your business is. And by the way, there is nobody in your organization but you that can do this. Nobody knows this well enough to break it down other than you to be able to do this. If they could, you would be out of a job. Okay. And by the way, the closer you get to Mad Libs, the more you will trounce your competitors. 
because you're going to be so process driven, your outputs will be identical every time, which means that they're predictable, which means that they can be trusted. And if they're trusted, then everybody is going to be game to work with you. Okay. Um, journeyman, that's where what they start to do is they, they start to riff on existing uh, frameworks that you might have. Okay. This is typically where we see managers and things along those lines. All right. They're able to say, okay, you know that Mad Libs thing? In this particular situation, we got to modify the Mad Libs. We need to put an adverb here instead of a noun. Okay. Fine. Or we need to change the story for this Mad Libs to be able to fit this particular client. Cool. Um, and then the mastery is when they're actually creating processes. Do any of you guys have people on your team that are currently creating processes for you? Okay. And are they processes at the core of the business? Mm -hmm. As in, if this process doesn't get done, the business fails. Good. Okay. Because that's typically where your mastery level is. And that means you've got someone on your team that you can trust to create that sort of process, which is awesome because it means it's no longer on your plate. Okay, because guess what? When you have brought up a leader within your organization who can start to do mastery stuff, then they can start to create more Mad Libs for your novices, which means you have duplicated your ability to grow the organization. All right, some of you may not yet be at that point where you've got someone that's kind of acting as a duplicate or a surrogate you. And they're definitely not going to be a surrogate you in every aspect of the business, okay? They might be the surrogate you when it comes to finance, or they might be the surrogate you when it comes to biz dev, or they might be the surrogate you when it comes to client onboarding, okay? Um, and that's okay if they only have mastery in one area. That's fine. You don't you don't have to expect them to have mastery in the, in the entire process, okay? So... Stephen, when you take those uh, and you get those recordings and you start to actually document those down, you can create a really robust library for people to be able to reference from, which is going to be great. And if you do it right, they're going to do it in exactly the way that you do it every time. The challenge with this is you're going to have to get really good at making sure that you keep it simple and not, not try to bring them up too quickly to the riff on it. So here, here's what a lot of people do when they try to teach. They go, okay, this is what we want to do, except in this circumstance, in which case you want to do this. Or if there's this really cool thing that comes up, we want to do this and this instead, right? And we move too fast for people. So instead, just keep it really, really simple. This is what we do. And when someone runs into a problem, all that is, is that's like an FAQ off of the, this is what we do. All right. That way it's not too much all at once. Thank you, that was good. Yeah, hopefully it helps. Who's next? Sorry, even my answers are long-winded. No, it's great. <laughs> you added multiple layers there, uh, Eric. We love layers. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of little bites. And yeah. lots so of little bites. <laughs> Oh man, I've got I got all sorts of little bites. I mean, we can go through the theory of teaching and education for hours if if we wanted to. Um, Rob, did you have a question? Oh, I was going to ask. Uh, I think I know the answer to this, but you use this uh, video transcribe and you know document process for your content as well. We do. Yeah. So we're all about repurposing. We're, we've also got a lot of uh, transparency when it comes to the work that we do. Um, we will teach you everything, the good, the bad, the ugly. We'll say, this is what we did and it didn't work. This is what we did and it did work. Um, this is exactly the email we wrote. This is exactly the video we created. This is exactly the web page we you know, developed. Whatever it is, we're good with teaching all of that stuff. Um, and, and we're good with teaching it for a couple of reasons. One, it helps us continue to be better at teaching. Two, it helps our audience, right? Um, and and we want them to be better, even if they if they use us or not. We want them to be better. And then three, um, we know 
that not everybody is going to be able to be able to do all of the things that we teach. And sometimes it's easier to just go, you know what? You guys understand this? You do it. And that's okay. Thanks. But yeah. And and we and we absolutely like now and when we onboard new people that need to do different tasks, we're like, awesome. Here's the videos. <laughs> Here's the transcripts. Here's how to do it all because we've already documented for everybody else. Now, again, we're in a unique position that we get to do it for our clients and our internal teams that may or may not apply to you. I would say you probably should be. You should be teaching your audience. You should be making them smarter because they're interacting with you. Like that, that is a deep belief that we have here at Predictive ROI is you should be, you should be selling from a position of authority you're only an authority if you can teach people and make them better. If their tomorrow is better than today because they interacted with you or your content. So I would encourage you find, to find ways to be able to use it for double, dual purpose. Ron, do you have a question? Okay. Just, okay. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Jamie. Um, Okay, so you know I learn best when I apply it. So, yep. and so I'm thinking of my um, strengths. And one of the things that came um, to mind is a lot of people get stuck because they don't know what to say. Well, you know, they don't, so they don't acknowledge, appreciate someone or, wow. um, right? But so the strength was knowing what to say. But how do I teach that other than being around and just learning over time mm, or right. writing down every example of things we say in certain scenarios? You know what I mean? Our, our right. goods are in the details and the personalization. But why couldn't you have a database of the things that you say yeah. based on, look, it's a birthday. And, and, it's, a birthday for, and it's a birthday for a guy. Mm-hmm. And it's a birthday for a guy that's a client of an organization. Here, so are the, then, here are the 17 examples. Okay. And so then I'm, what we're teaching our people is where to go find examples so that they can. Mad libs. All, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. And same with the, then the knowing what to do, right? What to give. It comes in the same ways. You know, here's the examples of. Right. Okay. Okay. Yep. And, and again, all that is, is just documenting stuff that you do already. All, all we're saying is make sure that you, you keep track of it because otherwise it's going to be super hard for someone else to be able to come in behind you. And it'll always be your job. Can I share a story on this particular yeah. thing? So there is a lady who is on TikTok and she, you know, goes back and forth with her coworker on how best to say you're wasting my time or, you know, other little things that work that if you're blunt, you're going to get written up by HR. But if, you know, you reword it this way, it's nice and polite and, you know, goes through. And nice. Jamie, Jamie, when you were talking about that, that's exactly who I thought of. I'm like, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, oh. That yeah. is interesting. Thank you. So yeah, nuanced ways to say hard things. Right. It's the sympathy that always trips people up, right? Or the thinking of you or the, yep, I like that. Yeah. Okay. Great input, Rob. Dave, anything you want to add? You're muted, sorry. Absolutely. No, I'm just soaking it all in. I agree 100%. That's kind of where how we approach life. I mean, there's there's things I'm learning and stuff. I'm just listening, soaking it all in. Well, we're so, glad that yeah. you, every one of you are here. We have about an extra 17 minutes, and we always say if there are no other questions, we'll give you extra time for the day. We have two last thoughts that I'd like to share. Haley, anything you want to ask or add input in? I'm just enjoying this whole conversation because, April, you know probably better than anyone. I am the person on the other end receiving that ask of, can you please break this down for me? Can you please tell me what I've said here? So I really love this conversation. And um, maybe just if you know you are not that person, April, this is what we talked about on our podcast episode. If you know you are not that person who can 
even verbalize or write down, you know, what it is that you do. There are people out there who, who can help you with that, who can help you have that conversation yes. and get those ideas out. And Haley, we did, uh, you can go back to our Just the Elephant. We, uh, I actually interviewed Haley as our content specialist. Uh, she is an amazing individual who takes all of my words and puts them into an amazing, beautiful presentation. And uh, we also recruited a editor and publisher that helped um, take our book, to, our second edition to a whole new level because we found people that was able to take the communication and put it into a very palatable, as Haley likes to say, um, way of getting across to the people. And I and Eric, you are setting up and preparing to share a whole conversation around that. I can see that. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I, I know, Jamie, like, we're glad you're here. See you, Jamie. Bye-bye. Um, yeah. So there's, um, when you're handing it off to someone else, it can be really challenging sometimes. Um, so one thing to kind of keep in mind as you're breaking down what it is that you're teaching is people can only keep so many concepts in their mind at one time, okay? So whenever you give people two pieces of, of information, they also need to be able to connect those pieces of information, okay? When you have three pieces of information, they need to be able to connect all of those pieces of information. So this right here, three pieces of information is the most efficient way to be able to teach. Anything less, and you're not maximizing your efficiency. Anything more, and you're adding complexity more than you are adding depth. Okay? Because as soon as we start add one more piece of information, we went from three connections to six connections that need to be made as far as information goes. Okay? So, and, and you can imagine with five and six and seven, like it just, it gets more and more and more and more as you go. So when, if you're struggling with how to kind of break stuff down for a Haley, right? Uh, to be able to run with, kind of limiting yourself to three is a useful tool to make sure that you're not trying to do too much all at one time. Okay. And if you can't limit yourself to three, and it might be two different subjects. It might be two different processes, or it might be processes that need to be taught separately until they are mastered, and then they can be combined later, right? Well, and, and Eric, one of the things that a lot of the people that I know that we've been in the community with predictive with, as, as well as for ourselves, is when you start really looking in the mirror, as we like to say, we mm -hmm. ultimately have three things. We have a whole, a braid, and a building bridges concept that we slay onions through, right? And yep. I've really come to, but it's taken me years to get to clarity of how to narrow that niche and plant oh. that flag. Simplicity and is the most complex thing in the world. <laughs> Literally, right? <laughs> And yet I want those listening to our uh, recording as well as those here is to, you know, to give ourselves that grace in that journey of recognizing that, and Haley has been a huge gift in that journey of understanding that we had to, we had to work through some of our own layers to get to the clarity, to get that simpl simplicity. Does that make sense? Yep. Uh, Absolutely. Is there any any other questions or any other? Um, I have one last question for Eric, unless anyone else has one. No? Ooh, you've done such a fabulous job today, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> so, Eric, and the journey you've had with One Light Ahead, both uh, as you know, Coach Hat and as a uh, dear friend and client, also, mm -hmm. um, is there anything you'd like to share with our audience in your journey? Yeah. So, um, I think the biggest thing that I always have to remind myself is it's never perfect. And that it's everything is iterative design. So don't don't fall in love with a particular uh, stage of the process. Okay. Because that'll stop you from moving forward on the next stages that have to happen. Um, so there is there's no process that can't be improved. Um, and there's no process that isn't going to have to evolve 
because life is not static. So I would say I would say that's a that's a that's a a big lesson um, that I've been able to to de definitely walk alongside you on April and and see demonstrated in a lot of ways, which has been great. Gosh, and and we have uh, co created in that arena because we both got to learn the same <laughs> in different ways, right? <laughs> yep, absolutely. Yeah. Just just in different different aspects of life, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so obviously, as you guys have, have uh, seen, uh, I tend to nerd out more on the business side of things. Uh, that's, that's where my focus is. That's where I just kind of wake up ready to, to dive into. Um, but again, all of these principles that we're talking about, they, they still apply to other areas of life if, if you choose to apply them that way. Um, Excellent. My, yeah. You could go on for a lot more there. <laughs> you to, it's a gift to have you with us, Eric. It's been a joy as always. And to each and every one of you, you've represented a multitude of areas of states and, and the whole, you know, North America. We're thankful for each and every one of you being here. Uh, we will be hosting another Q&A next month. And of course, uh, we are um, preparing to launch into small group retreats and we'll have all kinds of fun stuff and maybe a surprise guest about that next month. Um, so, most importantly, uh, and Stephen is one of our um, uh, attendees of that last event and a fun picture that uh, we're going to share in a role in the near future. So, but most importantly, we do these Q&As to be helpful. We do them to provide special guests, such as Eric, um, who brings an immense amount of wisdom and an opportunity for people to connect and create um, new opportunities and mindset and awareness so that you can truly walk your talk and lead the way you choose to lead. Thank you for joining us. and. Having a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. You guys, Thank you. hopefully Thank you very helpful. much, Eric. Absolutely helpful. That was great. Thank you. Bye-bye.